After yesterday's video that goes over the different Veritas sharpening jigs that you have to choose from, I had a lot of people reach out to me and tell me that they struggled to keep the Mark II square, or that when they sharpen, their iron's not coming out square. So, let's take a look at that, and I'll show you the method I use to keep everything square while I'm using the Mark II. Stick with me. Step one is figuring out the angle that you want to set your iron to. So if you bought a used iron, I'm going to recommend one of these because it tells you what angle it's at. Especially for a bevel down plane, the angle doesn't matter. So you really just want to like freshen that up. Bevel down, the angle matters because that bevel and the bed determine your cut angle. For bevel down, it's the frog that determines that. So this iron is new, so I know that it's at 30 degrees, but you can always test that. Put it in there. Now see if I put it to 25, see the gap in the front? If I put it to 35, see the gap in the back? So I know that this is at 30, because I don't see any gaps. So I know what angle now I wanna set this iron to. So the next step is setting up your registration jig. High angle is for bevel up planes. Standard angle is for bevel down and chisels. And then back bevels, I've never used. A back bevel is only for a bevel down plane. Do not use it with chisels and do not use it with a bevel up plane. What a back bevel does is it changes that cut angle. So if you have a 45 degree frog and then you put a 10 degree back bevel on your bevel down iron, you have changed that cutting angle to 55. Okay, we could do a separate video about back bevels, but I don't use them. So we know this is at 30 degrees. I want to freshen that up. So standard angles, I'm using bevel down, 30 degrees. So we have that set. Now we know that we are using the yellow, the standard angle. I'm going to set this onto my roller. You want to figure out what roller you want because they offer the flat roller and the cambered roller. That's going to be a preference thing. If you are redoing the primary, I recommend using the flat roller and then switching to the cambered roller. So we want to set this at number two, set that on there, screw it down. The next step, if you don't know how wide your iron is or you forgot or whatever, grab one of these little tape measures, keep it, keep it at your sharpening station and measure your iron. So this one comes in at two inches. So now that I know my angle and I know how wide this is, I can put my registration jig onto the clamp. So when you look at this, it has a line there and then this has measurements on the top. So I'm gonna put this to match at that two. You want to make sure that this is as close to dead accurate as possible because it does make a difference and then tighten that down. Now we're ready to put our iron in this. So there we go. You want to bump it up against it, pinch it. Okay. Make sure it's up against here and up against this edge. Now what I do is I stand it up. Okay. When you stand it up, this wants to rock. This wants to go to the side like that because of the weight. So that's when I pinch it from the sides. So I pinch it like that. Mostly standing it up is so that it bumps against the registration jig and then it's just a lot easier to pinch it like that and hold it square up against that bar on the side. Then from here, what you wanna do is snug these up. So you wanna check, see how this one was loose and this one's more snug, so I'm gonna loosen that. The goal is to get the same resistance on both sides. There we go. So then you go snug. Snug. There we go. Maybe one more. Nope. So there you go, you wanna alternate. If you crank one side down and then try to crank the other, you're gonna see that this clamp is off. You're gonna see that it clo it's closed on one side more than the other and that's going to skew your iron too because it's changing how much pressure is going onto this iron and where that iron is sitting like that. So you want to try to keep those two even. I don't know if you can see on the sides right here. See how they're pretty much even? Okay. So now I know I'm good. Check to make sure that you're bumped up against this side, bumped up against there, and then you can take this off. If you struggle like I do with these, have a pair of pliers around and just lightly grip. Boop. <laughs> and then you can take that off. <laughs> okay. So now you're ready to sharpen. Okay. We know that it's in the jig square. We know that it's centered in the jig square because we put the two, we had the, the lines all lined up. We're good to go. 
From here, it's going to be all about you and your pressure. It's going to be about the stone you have, how flat it is, if one side's more worn than the other, if you're using sandpaper, if it's not flat, that kind of stuff, okay? So when you use this, you have options. You can do two like this. You can do one like that. Pretty much let the jig and the stone do the work for you. You do not need to push down real hard with this. You are not making it sharpen, okay? You are just running it over the stone and let the bits and the grit and the weight of the jig do the weight, do the sharpening for you. So just put your two fingers here and lightly, very lightly roll it, okay? And then you do your sharpening. When you use bevel up irons, it's very possible that it's going to hit here and here at the same time, basically standing it up on its own. But what you can always do is lift it up and still do the pinch method. If for whatever reason you're not using the side clamping and you need to use the top clamp, you can pinch this way, you can pinch from this side like that, you can pinch like that and then tighten down. Find whatever's comfortable. The most important thing is that you're pushing this up against that. So hopefully this helped you guys out. If you are still running into the issue of your irons not sharpening square while using the Mark II, there's a couple more things you can check. Check to make sure that your iron is square. If your iron isn't square, the Mark II is going to correct that, so it's going to look off until it catches up to itself and squares that iron. The other thing that you could check is the roller on the Mark II because they, they wear out. So check it with calipers to make sure that it's even on both sides. Then again, if you are still having issues, it could be user error. It could be how much pressure you're putting on the sides of the irons. If you're heavy on one side versus the other, just remember, use very light pressure. Let the stone and the weight of the iron and the Mark II do the sharpening for you. The last couple things are going to come down to what you're using to sharpen. So if you're using a water stone, ceramic stone, the Shapton glass stones, that's a ceramic stone, make sure they're flat. If you were sharpening a bunch of different irons and you haven't flattened it, flatten your stone. If you're using diamond plates, you don't have to worry about flat, but you do have to worry about how worn one side is versus the other. So if you use one side of the stone to flatten a bunch of chisels, that side's going to be more worn than the other side. So you can still use it. You don't have to throw it away. What you do is you would sharpen, 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 flip the stone around, sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. That'll even itself out. People that use water stones and ceramic stones constantly have to flip their stones around. And people that use diamond plates should really do the same thing. I know it's a habit for me. And it just helps keep the diamond plate to wear evenly across the entire surface, which is going to help you in the long run with a lot of different things. Being square is one of those. <laughs> so again, I hope this helped you guys out. If you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, feel free to let us know down below. Don't forget to do that like and subscribe thing and have a good day.